Hello, hello. I've arrived. Artist, archivist, VTuber, and tonight, theoretical medical professional. You can call me Tiberius Vanderfield. All right. So, we're a little bit delayed today. Fortunately, I'm delayed by good news. Yes, nothing, nothing has gone wrong. I just, uh, yeah, I had, uh, lost track of time a little bit. So, yeah, nothing to be shared immediately. I might talk a little bit a bit more about it once I know a little bit more. But, I don't know, probably I wouldn't be going into much detail anyway. But yes, anyway, it's neither here nor there, but what is here is Arknights. But yes, we'll be doing some more Arknights tonight. It's already a little bit late, so I'm probably not going to be playing for very long. But yes, I do believe that I should be able to play at a more, uh, a less late time, ideally, going forward. Again, I just got a little bit distracted by some good news, long story short. And so, that is that. But yes. So, beyond that, tomorrow we should be seeing another stream, ideally closer to 8.30pm Central Time. Yes, if not, you know, precisely at that time. But yes. Uh, once again, I, I don't know if I... I'm pretty sure I addressed this at some point, but uh, I believe, if I am understanding correctly, this should be the week that we resume the Sheppy Sheps and I resume our collab series. If not, then we will be seeing more Arc Knights tomorrow. But yes. So, don't want to spend too, too much time here because, again, we are quite limited on time. So, let's get into things. The first of the things being talking about a new operator. Well, maybe not new, but new to us. But yes, so I had actually delayed streaming yesterday. I was originally planning on streaming yesterday, but then I realized, oh, it's been a while since I've done an operator spotlight, and I wanted to prepare one. And so <clears throat> I decided to do that in the time it would take for me to stream. And indeed, it did take the time it would take for me to stream. I was working on that for like two and a half hours. But yes, I have a tendency to be a little bit, uh, a little bit effusive in my notes. I write at great length, probably much greater length than is strictly necessary, especially considering that I intend these as notes, though they kind of end up more like a script by the time I'm done with them. But yes, so, you know, <laughs> that's something to keep in mind for when I'm working on future, future spotlights. But yes, so the operator we'll be talking about today is not anyone who's terribly relevant to the story, but just sort of a character that I like. But yes, on Cyrus. But yes, she is a library. She is a civil engineer. She is a vanguard. But yeah, she's got some interesting traits gameplay wise, but we'll get to that in a second. But yeah, first of all, We'll talk a little bit about her as a character, and her most pertinent trait, which is her extraordinarily poor luck. But yes, she is an incredibly unlucky. But yes, we'll get to that a little bit more as well. And again, I've got a lot of a lot here that is written down, and not a whole lot of time to say a whole lot of it. So we might might cut down a little bit. But yeah. So, long story short, she is, of course, yes, her family, I should say, hails from a region known as Siesta, which is the, a place where a few events take place, a few of the story events take place. We haven't gotten to those events yet, so I'm not going to talk too much about Pon Cyrus's backstory in regards to Siesta, because that's a little bit of a spoiler for some of the events. But yes, so we'll, I'll talk in broad strokes. Again, I probably need to do that anyway for the sake of time. But yes, so Pon Cyrus, uh, her family comes from Siesta. They had actually moved away from Siesta 
shortly after she was born, so she didn't quite get to experience it, at least not in person. Instead, she experienced it through the stories that her grandfather would tell. But yes, and he was a, a firm believer in the sort of building the ideal siesta, both in a figurative and in a literal sense, as he was a construction worker. But yes, growing up hearing that and being very close to her grandfather, Pon Cyrus was inspired to also take up the, the craft of construction. And it worked out pretty okay for her in the end, but it was a, it was a rough path getting there. But yeah. So, among other things, her grandfather wanted to see an ideal siesta that he described as being a city of, quote, love and kindness, which is a pretty nice place to live, I'd say. But yes. So, on to luck and whatnot. On Cyrus is infected, which is already pretty unlucky. But yeah, beyond that, she uh, was infected in a incredibly unlikely and unlucky scenario as well. And she was current, she was working as an intern, or rather this was after she was working as an intern, which we'll get to as well. But yeah, she was working as a member of a demolition crew, and due to some yeah, due to them not quite following safety regulations properly, yeah, a originium-based explosive went off and threw debris much farther than anticipated, and it happened to break a window as Pon Cyrus was walking by, and the glass, contaminated with originium dust, is what caused her to develop oropathy, being cut by it. But yeah, so as I alluded to, she had uh, been an intern uh, in college. But yeah, and we don't, her files don't tell us precisely what it was, but she had the blame for some sort of incident pinned on her, and in the, and thus she was unable to find work in construction, thus joining the demolition team. But yeah, while working there, again, she got infected, and after that, she decided, well, you know what? Let's let's go to Siesta. Let's try to make it there. Yeah, she didn't have a whole lot else going for her at that immediate time. But yeah, so she took a long and long and uh, yeah, eventful journey to Siesta, finding a lot of false destinations, apparently, according to her files as well, before finally arriving at the city itself. And that is, yeah, well, again, we won't talk too much about precisely what it was that uh, she experienced when she arrived, but suffice it to say that it didn't quite live up to her expectations, didn't quite meet what she had had in mind from the stories. Sit. But yeah, so as a... As a general overview of her character, she's someone who's very determined and optimistic. Yeah, she tends to look past her sort of unfortunate circumstances to see the the luck and good good in basically everything. Ah, hello all. Good to see you. Thank you for dropping by. But yeah, she is a person who looks past her unfortunate circumstances to try and find the good in basically everything that she has experienced. You know, she is infected, but she takes some comfort in the fact that her infection is pretty mild, all things considered. But yeah, she didn't make it to the siesta that she knew from her grandfather's stories, but that just means that she has the opportunity to help build it, build it up herself. Things like that. But yes, one fun thing about her is that she's actually uh, acquainted with Auk and Warfarin, whom we've talked about before. Yeah, good to see you too. Saw there was a new Arknights collab thing. My friend uses a gotcha system for a custom Arknights gotcha, so now he has to add more. Mm. Yeah, new Arknights collab. Um, would that be the... you know which one that, that you're talking about, specifically? Because, yeah, the... There's not an event going on that I'm aware of. I, I feel like I would know if I had seen one. 
Yes, let me see. All right. Well, yeah. So anyway, so she's acquainted with Warfarin and Auk. Yeah, she actually, when she first, uh, when she first arrived at Rhodes Island, let me just look at this link real quick. Ah, okay. So there's a, a Sanrio event, or at least uh, an upcoming one. Because yeah, that's definitely not definitely not going on right now, at least not in the global server. Yeah, upcoming. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, for a second there, I, I thought that uh, some event had started that I wasn't aware of. But yes, it is good to see that I'm not that out of the loop. Though I am definitely out of the loop on most things. But yes, so upon arriving at Rhodes Island, she went in for a checkup, but accidentally ended up in a medical trial that uh, Auk was uh, holding for a painkiller. But yeah. Everyone else, basically, who who tried the painkiller found that while it did kill pain, it was also extraordinarily unpleasant due to being overwhelmingly sour. Uh, Pon Cyrus, on the other hand, found it quite pleasant. And that was sort of what drew uh, Ox's attention and later on Warfarin's, Warfarin's attention as well. I assume probably she became aware of Pon Cyrus largely through her association with Ox. But yes, and so Warfarin, despite being a person that most people would find uh, rather unfortunate to have as their primary care provider, is such for Pon Cyrus seemingly without incident. They seem to get along fairly well. But yes. So a few other notes about Pon Cyrus. Yeah, her uh, her code name, as she mentions, is derived from a type of orange also known as the trifolate orange. Yeah, for its three... I was going to say three shaped leaves, but that's not quite it. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of three pronged leaves, I should say. But yes. The trifolate orange is also known as the hardy orange and is known for its, its hardiness, hence the name. Yeah, its resistance to various diseases and blights which is probably the reason for, you know, or is probably referenced in Pon Cyrus's resilience to the various unfortunate circumstances she has suffered in her life. But yes, as for some other things, um, I think that's basically the high points. Again, there is more to be said, but I want to try to keep this a little bit brief. And we haven't even started talking about her gameplay. Well, let's talk about her gameplay. But yes, as mentioned, Pon Cyrus is a vanguard. So that means that she is one of the first units that you will typically deploy on a given map. But unlike other vanguards, she does have some abilities that give her an incentive to stay out on the field a little bit longer. But yeah, we'll get into that here in a second. <coughs> Yes, so her first skill is Charge Gamma, which is, you know, your standard un unremarkable basic uh, Vanguard skill. Yes, it provides her with, uh, or it provides you, rather, with 12 deployment points. That has an initial charge of 10 skill points, going up to 20, requiring 44 skill points, down to 35 at max level. Yeah, the it activates and recovers automatically and yeah the amount of amount of skill points provided doesn't change as the level increases but yeah so that's not super exciting what is somewhat interesting however is her second skill engineer's wish but yes it is an auto recovery and manual activation skill that grants dp as well as giving her a buff but yeah so the buff is gives a bonus to attack and defense. It lasts 15 seconds. But yeah, the it gives plus 10% attack up to 35% at max skill level and 30% up to 65%. But yeah, it provides 12 DP up to 12, or provides 9 DP up to 12 rather. 
yes, the initial charge is 25 SP and remains as such regardless of how much it is improved. And the SP requirement starts at 50, going down to 40. And so all of that is, you know, it's more interesting than her basic skill, but it's not anything super interesting on its own. What does become interesting is the fact that once you have activated it twice, the buff that it provides becomes permanent. Like she just always has that effect active until such time as she retreats or is defeated. Sip. But yes. So that's a pretty decent buff to have active at all times. But yes, in addition, once that buff is permanently active, she also gains an additional 1 DP every 4 seconds. But yeah, as far as I can tell, the buff being permanently active doesn't prevent her from activating her skill again. But yeah, it seems to... I haven't been able to find anything that says conclusively whether it does or does not, but it doesn't... I'm leaning more towards it continuing to... Yeah, continuing to work normally, just with the buff being permanent. But yes. So anyway, without any skill upgrades, it requires 90 seconds to get to that point, reduced down to 70 seconds at max level. But yeah, so this is taking into account the initial amount of skill points that she has, the rate at which she gains them, and, you know, the time of the buff, because while it's active, she can't start charging up a new one. But yes, what else is interesting, and another, another mechanic that gives her an incentive to stay on the field longer, is her talent, Demolition Team's Code. Yeah, it gives her 8% at base, up to 18% at potential 4 and Elite 2. Yeah, a 8 to 18% increase to her maximum HP after being deployed for 30 seconds. So yes, so she also gets a decent, maybe not massive, but decent health, health buff as well. Just for a little extra, a little extra reason to keep her around. Yes, she also has a module, which I do believe is available as well. Yeah, called the Morning Star of the Home Seeker. Yes, grants her a, at its base level, it grants her a plus 8% attack and defense buff, buff while blocking. Yeah, this is a effect shared with other, other of the same type of pioneer guards. But yes, being upgraded, it upgrades her talent granting a base of plus 18% max HP at its second level, and then a maximum, or yeah, a base of plus 20% max HP at its third level. And again, potential four increases her, increases her, effect, the effect of her talent by 3%. Yes, giving her a maximum of plus 23% added maximum health. So yes. I do feel like I'm being a little bit more brisk here than I would like, but such is the way of things. I guess I could have made this perhaps into just a talk about uh, this specific character time. That would maybe have uh, allowed me to be a bit less, uh, a little bit less hurried. Didn't necessarily want that because I do, I would prefer to play the game a little bit at the very least. But yeah, anyway. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about her costume, or a little bit about her outfit. Yeah, her design. But yeah, so, as you can see, her outfit is not tremendously practical for use on a construction site, but you know, whatever. Maybe not in a battle either. I was going to point out that she, that she, you know, doesn't necessarily wear this to a construction site, considering that whenever we're using her, we're using her in battle pretty much, but... Yeah, not the most practical for a battle either, but it's pretty par for the course. But yes, I do like it. I like the outfit a lot. Yeah, I like the, the hat in particular. I like the little feathered elements. Whoops. I'd appreciate it if you'd let me draw their drawing program. Hello? Why is this not working? Hmm. Strange. Ah, I'm because I'm pressing. 
because I'm pressing hotkeys on the wrong keyboard. No wonder I wasn't getting the tool I wanted anyway. Yes. So I like the, the little feather element on her hat. Yeah, I like the little feathered elements on the side of her head. Again, as a library character, she is based on a bird. Specifically, the type of bird that she is based on is known as a common tern, which I'm not necessarily familiar with, but it is, in fact, a bird. I'd looked into it enough to know that much. Yeah, also of note is her hammer. Yeah, I like the, the part here that makes it look a little bit like a meat tenderizer. Yeah, I assume that this is, you know, a sledgehammer. Yeah, I don't know that sledgehammers typically have this spiked element on them. But I also don't know that they don't. Yeah, I've not used a sledgehammer before, and I'm not super familiar with them as tools. So, take everything that I say about it with a grain of salt, I suppose. Yeah, this element here makes me think it looks a little bit like a trigger or something, a lever, perhaps. So I almost wonder if it has some sort of function, like if it activates something, you know, there's some sort of mechanism here as well, either something electronic or something mechanical. Yeah, I wonder if that is used for, for some purpose. Because, yeah, she has used this, this hammer in demolition as well as in construction. So, I almost wonder if it maybe has some sort of Originium-based uh, explosive capabilities, perhaps. Yeah, the little slotted section here on the end reminds me a little bit of certain types of hammers used to drive in tacks. A lot of them will have a sort of slot on them where you can put the tack in. Often this will be magnetized, where you can, you know, put the tack there and then sort of drive it in in a single swing, at least partially in, with a single swing, and have it be, you know, then you turn the hammer around and then pound the tack in with the, you know, pound the tack in normally from there. But yeah, I would assume that this is probably not what that is for. I mean, it's definitely not for tax. This is a little bit big to be used for tax. But, I don't know. I don't know what you drive in with a sledgehammer. I'm, well, I've only ever really been familiar with them in the... in the function of, you know, driving, or not driving, but destroying things, basically. Breaking things. I understand that you do use them to drive, like, I think railroad spikes and things of that nature. So, probably there is some use for it, but I don't know. I don't know that this is a design element that is found on real-world sledgehammers. But yeah, overall, I like her outfit quite a bit. I poked fun a little bit at it for not being super practical, but, you know, that's pretty normal. But yeah, I especially like her vest. I like the, the design here. Eh, that doesn't... That color doesn't stand out very well. But yes, I like this element. But yeah, when a jacket or a vest or something of that sort has sort of these two rows of buttons, it's described as being double-breasted. I like that. I like double-breasted outfits a lot, or double-breasted jackets and whatnot quite a bit. But yeah. But yeah, there's more that I probably could say, but again don't want to take up too much time. So, here is her Elite 2 artwork with the common turn pictured. And it's not quite so steady today. But yes, again, that's probably just because I'm... <laughs> I feel the rush. I need to get this done so I can play the game. Oh well. Again, this is uh, on me for having started as late as I did, unfortunately, but oh well. Something to be improved on next time. Yeah, definitely one thing. Not at all relevant to her actual design. Yeah, incidentally, the outfit doesn't seem to change from her basic to Elite 2 artwork. Which is a little bit unfortunate. But yeah. 
so not at all relevant to anything. And so perhaps also something that we could cut for time, but I feel like this this asset is like unusually small. Like it's pretty much all of the assets, with the exception of skins, which typically have a resolution of Yeah, about a 2K resolution, I suppose. Yeah, pretty much all of the like elite and elite two and basic artworks have a 1K resolution. But I feel like this one doesn't make very good use of the space. I feel like it's a bit smaller than it needs to be. Because, like, they're both, you know, they are both 1,024 pixels by 1,024 pixels. But, like, this image is, like, it just sort of feels a lot smaller. Yeah, definitely, it feels smaller than her, like, base artwork at the very least. In fact, it is a fair amount smaller as we can see if we scale it up a little bit. So yeah, slightly inefficient use of game game resource space, I think. So it's a little bit hard to zoom in on it and get good detail out of it. It's pretty good artwork otherwise, though. Yeah, just a little bit of, yeah, just a little bit of lack of optimization, I suppose can easily be forgiven, but it's the sort of thing that sticks out to me. Anyway, so, now that we've done all that, video game. And so, whoops, alright, video games, there we go. So yes, so, since we don't have a whole lot of time, we do have a boss stage coming up, but I get the feeling that since this I'm suspecting that this is either the end or very close to the end of the chapter. So there's probably going to be a lot of reading here to be done. So if I were to go through the cutscene, I probably wouldn't be able to... I probably wouldn't have time to do more than maybe one attempt at it, if that. So instead, we're going to do a few more side stages, I think. And I think now would be as good a time as any you put on Cyrus to the test. Let's see, do I... Ah, uh, also, I found out the key binding for deploying the movie again. It shouldn't be necessary, you know. Yeah, it shouldn't be necessary. I have, uh, yeah, vetted my vanguards pretty well, or and I have arranged them in such a way. Yeah, arrange them in such a way that they are unlikely to provide any spoilers. But anyway, Ponsiris. So, we're going to level her up a little bit. Get her on par with everyone else. Huh. Finding the structural support core in an instant and destroying it right away. Alright, with a little practice, I'm sure I can do this too. Indeed we shall. And now is the time for said practice. Metal? I'll take it. Thanks for your acknowledgement, Doctor. I'll work hard to make sure I'm worth it. Glad to hear. Yeah, there's... Looking at her hat some more. I feel like it feels familiar to me. Huh. Finding the structural support core in an instant. And yeah, I don't know right if there's any right. specific character. I don't think there's any in this game that has quite a a hat like that. I'll check out our surroundings. But it definitely, it feels familiar. It feels like I've seen this sort of design before. But I don't know. I don't know what it would be from. But yes. Anyway. So. Yeah. On account of me liking her character primarily, but also because I was interested in. The idea of her as a vanguard that is meant to stay on the battlefield longer than others. I decided I wanted to try out Pon Cyrus, and I just realized I don't have her her skill properly activated or picked out. I think. Just wait for us to get yep. Doctor. So, let's try that again. Retreat back to the stronghold and regroup. Yeah, that feeling when you step out of your house and you realize you forgot your keys. Alright, so. 
Engineer's wish. I'll check out our surroundings. What else do we want? Ports can stay. Snow sand we might want to swap out. Hmm. Yeah, I think we'll swap out snow sand. Who do we want for slowing, though? Ah. I just realized I don't have these arranged quite as properly. Hmm. It might go... I don't know. Hold on. Let me... <laughs> I kind of forgot what I had for going for team comp. Yes. So I've got... Oh! What I don't have is Amia, so let me remedy that. I won't let you down. So yes, Amia, two vanguards, two guards, a decent supply of defenders. We don't have... Yeah, now that we've swapped Jessica out, we don't have a sniper, so let's put one back in. Possibly Jessica herself. Why not? Just give your orders and I'll carry them out. Manticore we will keep in place, I think. Oh yeah, I also remembered what the key binding was to turn on the uh, dark mode. I won't keep it on necessarily. Stay focused. Look straight ahead. Hmm. I never did get used to the stench of war. For a second there I was Yeah, for a second there I got a little bit confused because I was thinking this was the map that we were just on. But yes, it is the map we were just on. Hmm. Alright, so you're going to want a medic sooner rather than later, I think. You're probably closer to the center than not. Actually, I guess I could have, you know, could use two medics, but... Hmm. I'm not that confident in Ponsiris. Oh no, she's doing pretty good, I guess. Hmm. Of course, now we have the issue of... Gaviel's gonna get shot at a lot, which I don't like, but hopefully Pon Cyrus can do a thing or two about that. It looks like we're gonna have a lot of action down here. Which I also don't like. It might have been good to put Estesia back on the team, but of course I didn't know about that ahead of time. Yeah, it seems that we're, we only have ranged units coming in from the left currently. That might not stay the same, but it's true currently. Yeah, putting Gummy in the middle again might not necessarily be ideal. But it's the best idea I can think of, and of course now we're don't have proper blocking on the left lane. So yeah. Hmm. And no, okay, we didn't get them in time. Um, and now we don't have anyone who's self-sufficient up top. We ideally won't need it necessarily. Alright, so now we do have the permanent effect of Pon Cyrus's skill. But yeah, the bar doesn't seem to be going down at all. Hmm. Yeah, that does imply to me that the yeah the buff doesn't reapply. So yeah, or it doesn't. Uh, oh dear. Okay, I think we might have lost a little bit. I suppose we'll see, but yeah, I definitely don't like Quartz where she is. Okay, so yeah, so we have lost, unfortunately. So we're going to need to be a little bit, uh... We're going to need to revise the strategy a little bit. No problem. Fire. Yeah. I guess we could... We might as well just back out. I suppose we could have stuck around a bit longer to gather perhaps a little bit more intel. Alright, so... We haven't seen everything, so if we'd waited around a little bit longer, we might have. Yeah, we have the light armored soldiers who have low resistance. 
Most of the rest of the enemies here do have pie resistance, though. Relatively speaking, at least. So yeah, so the problem we were encountering... The problem we were encountering was we had a lot of enemies that built up around here and eventually overwhelmed our defenses. So yeah, I think having Estesia on the bottom instead of perhaps Frostleaf would have been the choice there. At the very least, a source of arch damage, maybe even Amia. But yes. So the left hand side, again, we didn't have enough blocking there. That might actually be a place to deploy Frostleaf so that she can apply a little bit more damage to the uh, enemies coming down the left side. Yeah, and having her there would also allow us to take a little bit of damage off of Gaviel or whoever we choose. Yeah, one downside of the way our vanguards are currently set up is that they both have skills that have some pretty good benefits beyond just providing uh, deployment points. Yeah, so, you know, this provides deployment points, but it also provides uh, a buff. And once it is activated twice, it doesn't allow you to activate it again. So the only deployment points you get from it from that point on seem to be just the, you know, passive one every four seconds one, which is not not a great rate. I suppose it's better later on or it's, you know, it's OK later on because you don't have to. Uh, you typically don't have to deploy as many units as quickly in the later stages of the mission. And yeah, Texas's other skill gives her, or this, uh, yeah, Texas's currently equipped skill provides a stun as well. And so because they both have, you know, because they both have utility outside of providing deployment points, they both are a little bit worse at providing deployment points. So if we want to keep Texas around, we'd probably want to switch her back to charge gamma, maybe. I might also just want to improve Pon Cyrus's skill, because we haven't done that yet. But yeah, she did okay for what it's worth, I think. But yes, her positioning might not have been ideal. We might have actually wanted to push her a little bit more towards the enemy spawn, and maybe put a defender behind her. Or perhaps Frostleaf behind her, you know, whoever. Yeah, Gummy in the middle is still a pretty good choice, I think, because that will allow us to, or that will give us the, you know, constant effect of her giving her boosted, uh, originium fried steaks to everyone. But yes. So that will still be good, I think. Again, the right hand side, we didn't quite have enough damage to deal with enemies as they came in. So probably I would want to swap out Texas before too long. Yeah, Pon Cyrus's stats are pretty okay. Again, we don't have a huge buff. In fact, actually, even with the buff, yeah, even with the buff, she does actually have worse attack than Texas at this level, despite being a slightly higher level. She does have better defenses. Yeah, I don't know. This might just not be the ideal circumstance to use Pon Cyrus's skill, despite my desire to see it. Yeah, again, probably we just need to give it, uh, level it up a little bit more. So let me do that, actually, before I judge it too harshly. Yeah, it does take a little while before it starts to get decent, uh... I think we'll... I don't know... Semi-synthetic solvent. I don't know if I have a good supply of that. Apparently not. Because, yeah, stages where I can get it reliably haven't been unlocked yet and won't be unlocked for quite a while. You can use lower-level materials to craft into higher-level materials, generally speaking, but I don't know if I want to be doing that too, too much. So yeah, Ponsiris, 
might just not be the best choice in this circumstance, which is fine. You know, I would like to use her, but it might just not be, you know, this might just not be the time for, for it. At the very least, she could probably use more backup. Because yes, I was expecting... Yeah, I hadn't used her before, so I didn't really have the exact effects of her skill in mind. It didn't, it didn't feel like it took too long to activate, which is nice. One thing that I had in my notes that I wanted to mention is that because she does have, you know, this skill that needs to be activated twice to get the best benefit out of it. Yeah, she can benefit a lot from units that allow her to increase the rate at which she gains skill points such as Telopsis, who passively does so, or uh, Warfarin, in fact, who can also provide skill points from uh, one of her talents. But yes. So, Pawn Cyrus is fine. Or rather, I'm going to keep using Pawn Cyrus. Fine is a strong word, but I'm going to keep using her as is. But yeah, I do want more deployment points faster, the, di the difference isn't... Well, I don't know. The difference isn't that big. I think we're going to be fine with them as they are. Manual activation does still leave a lot of room for me to forget to activate them. So, uh, let's try not to do that. But yes, Astesia, Improved Block. Can I... I thought I had this set to default. Maybe I didn't. Estesia also hasn't had her skills upgraded now that I think about it. I'm over here, Doctor. Hmm. Yes, Gummy is fine as is. Gaviel is fine as is. Yeah, the enemies on the left hand side are more resistant to or they're more resistant. Full stop. They have higher resistance to the stat. So yes, so having more melee or physical damage their way would be best. So yeah, I think I have things a little bit figured out here. Stay focused. Look straight ahead. Yeah, another thing that we sort of uh I'll definitely prove myself this time. Yeah, another thing that we're sort of running into here is that both of our vanguards are slightly slightly higher rarity. Slightly higher in rarity. Uh, Texas is going to need to be here. Well, the enemies didn't come from the south in, for a while, I don't think. No, it's probably safer to do that. Um, anyway. So yeah, so like I was saying, our vanguards are a little bit higher in uh, rarity now, which means that they're a little bit higher in... Yeah, they're a little bit higher in uh, cost as well. And so yes, because of that, they're going to be a little bit harder to deploy early. Yeah, I was thinking about putting Manticore there for a little while, but I don't really know that that's going to benefit us tremendously. Yes, place Astesia. Astesia. I'm going to need another medic before too long. Probably... Hmm... Yeah, without the the added support of Gaviel, or without the added su or the added support of Gummy, rather, On Cyrus is in a little bit of a situation over there, which I'm not too keen on. Hmm. Okay. Um. I wasn't paying attention there. I probably could have gotten more skill point or deployment points there. Hmm. Hmm. So, okay. let's try to make the if best of this. Closer. Yeah, Gummy is holding her own pretty well. I'll give you the best of yes. Yes, follow and follow back. But yeah, I'm not really about that, I'm afraid. I'm yes, I appreciate the message, but, you know, I will follow if I feel like, you know, I want to follow. I don't do follow for follow type things. I apologize for that. Yes, you're free to f stick around if you feel so inclined, but 
Yeah, I apologize. You will not see that. Yeah, now here is not quite the place to ask for that. But yes. So, as we were saying, Astasia is holding her own pretty well, to be honest. This might not be incredibly ideal. This definitely could be better, but we're holding our own pretty well. We've got the extra damage from... Ooh, okay. Now we're going to be experiencing some extra damage. I guess we can deploy Texas again. Just for a little bit more blocking. Because, yeah, Gummy is not very high on the damage output. Hmm. This is bad, to put it simply. So, we're going to concentrate a lot of damage here, and we're going to see how that works out. I'm guessing the answer is probably not going to be well, but we might just be able to, to pull through. It depends on how the rest of these waves go. Hmm. Yeah, the left side is holding up pretty well. And ah, uh, I guess we can we can put the Durnar back on the field now. Yes, we will wait for a few more to get in range and then activate. There we go. Take them all out quickly. Yes, the added healing support from Gummy will be good. Yurnar is doing her job well. On Cyrus is surviving very well, in fact. Yeah, I was kind of thinking of her skill primarily for the damage buff, which hasn't been quite as sizable as I was thinking of. Hmm. Alright, so they should go down pretty quickly here and not be too much of a bother. Very good, very good. Okay. So, I'm not worried anymore, we're good. But yeah, we did go through a lot of defenders on the right hand side, both actual defenders and, you know, units used to defend. But yeah, Ponsiris did survive that very, very well. Trying to escape after I laid you to siege? Don't be silly. And I'm realizing now that we were using pract a practice. We were practicing there, so I don't actually get a benefit for that time, but not too bad. Not too bad. But yes. Well, I suppose if nothing else, we've had some time to get used to Ponsiris. But yeah, the. Again, I was thinking more about the damage, but the durability is actually really, really the star of the show here, it seems like. Because, yeah, they required, you know, I did have to plug a leak there when some dogs managed to get past. But that's just a matter of, you know, blocking, not having enough units to block with, and not an issue of, yeah, not having enough block between the units I was using, I suppose. And not an issue of us not having, you know, the survivability to not let enemies through. But yeah, the right-hand side, though, is where we had to, uh, we had a lot of troubles. We're not going to play the mission again, but I just wanted to check. Yeah, Durnar, Durnar actually is pretty low level. I'll probably want to improve Durnar a little bit if we're going to keep using her. So yeah. I suppose, if nothing else, this, this experience here was a good chance for me to learn a little bit more about the units that we have. But yeah, I don't think we're going to use... I don't know if we want to use Ponsiris and Texas both with their sort of specialized skills at the same time. And again, it might be better to have a cheaper Vanguard, a lower rarity Vanguard, to pair with them. Because I don't have a whole lot of DP generation, and especially I don't have quite as much DP generation from Ponsiris. 
But yeah, so having having a another source of faster DP to pair with her would probably be ideal. And again, we could probably do that just by switching in or switching Texas back to charge Gamma if we wanted to, or by switching in a different Vanguard. But yeah, all told, I think that was pretty successful. Yeah, we didn't make a whole lot of progress, but we did learn a little bit, and that's important too. So yes, so short as it is, it's about time that we wrapped up. So let's see. If anyone has any raid suggestions, as always, I would be delighted to hear them. If not, I can find a target as well. And, 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 what else is there to say? I don't know if there's anything that needs to be gone over in any great detail. But yeah, again, tomorrow, 8.30 p.m. Central Time, you should be seeing either the collab or perhaps just me playing some more Ark Knights. Yeah, again, 8.30 p.m. seems like a realistic time. If I really pushed it, I might be able to make 8 p.m. But I don't make that usually on days when I don't work uh, late. So it's probably, it's unlikely that, it, that 8 p.m. would happen. Unless it was just a really weird day, to be honest. Yes, 8.30 p.m. is more realistic and more likely. But yes. So, let's see. So, Arc Knights tonight, tomorrow, again, either we will be collabing, playing Coffee Talk with Sheppy Sheps, or we will be doing some more Arc Knights. Next week, ideally, I will be playing on Wednesday. I actually already got a head start on the next Operator Spotlight, so I'm not going to feel most likely, assuming that I continue working on it and get it finished between now and then. But, uh... <laughs> I shouldn't feel much need to delay anything for the purposes of that. And since we were honestly kind of a lot, uh, since we kind of glossed over upon Cyrus a lot, another example of her bad luck getting largely passed up even when it was, even when we were ostensibly focusing on her. But yeah, because we sort of glossed over upon Cyrus a little bit, we might talk a little bit more about her next Wednesday as well. Yes. Anyway, I don't see any raid suggestions, so I think we're going to go and visit Sroka. Yes, Sroka V2. Seen them a fair amount recently, playing some more Valheim once again. Alright. Raid. Sroka V2. Sroka V2, or just Sroka V2. There we go. Alright, the customary raid message is, as always, we have arrived. And, let's see. Already went over the schedule. Already went over some of the things I've been thinking about. And, yeah, that should be basically all that we need to say. So, thank you all for being here tonight. I hope that you have had a fine night. I hope that you will continue to have a fine night every night. And I hope that you will be well until the next time I see you. Thank you all very much and farewell. Let us get this raid under